today's module we are going to study about the local bodies officials and tourism so we'll start off with the objectives introduction we'll discuss about local bodies in india the evolution of local bodies what are the various functions of the local bodies and state local bodies relationship these are the topics we are going to cover in this particular module now the objectives of today's module are when one mentions about tourism development or promotion generally the issues taken into account are the government policy the role of the travel trade infrastructure development etc however in this unit our objective is to draw the attention towards the role of local bodies and officials after covering up this unit you will be able to know about the evolution and functions of local bodies recognize their importance in relation to tourism development and understand why there is a need for improvement in their functions introduction to local bodies let us examine the following two situations situation number 1 a group of tourists was to spend 3 days at destination a 2 days before their departure comes the news that the cases of gastroenteritis have been reported at the destination and the water supply was affected the municipality was being held responsible for this the group cursed the municipal authorities however the visit was changed to destination b the local population of destination a besides facing health hazards also suffered economic losses because the money these tourists along with many others who have also must have either changed their itinerary or chopped the area to visit would have spent there was now spent at destination b situation number 2 At destination C everything is fine and running smoothly suddenly large number of tourists start arriving this leads to traffic chaos water scarcity parking problems shortage of edibles and increase in prices etc because more and more tourists are coming to that destination C much more than it was expected for the local body and the officials responsible for administering the town are blamed for this by both the residents as well as the tourists there are and can be many more situations like this hence it must be noted that the role of local bodies and officials is crucial in tourism planning and development many developers and planners ignore this or turn their eyes away this is disastrous in the long run Here we attempt to highlight the role and functions of local bodies in tourism development, sustenance and promotion. It pinpoints their failures and weaknesses, locates the reason for this and suggests measures for improvement. Now coming to the topic local bodies in India. Today in India we have various kinds of local bodies functioning in their respective areas. For example, municipality or municipal corporations village panchayats zilla parishads etc these are representative bodies for the members are elected from among and by the people besides these there are certain other bodies also at the local or regional levels which cater to the development needs of the area for example delhi development authority garhwal mandal vikas nigam kumau mandal vikas nigam etc in the following sections we will look at their evolution functions and relationship with the state now we take up the evolution of local bodies the evolution of local self government and the local bodies in india from the prehistoric times to the present has a checkered but a fascinating history they emerged through various stages and phases with regional and local variations for example The ruins of the Harappan civilization testify to an extent the efficient and organized municipal organization of a township. The Jataka stories mention flourishing townships. The Arthashastra of Kautilya gives details of municipal as well as rural administration in India. The Vedic and Sangam literature have ample reference to local bodies. In pre-independence India, statutory institutions were established in the area of urban local self-government. Ever since the establishment of the Madras Municipal Corporation, there has been a proliferation of municipal body. After independence, the government of India gave due weightage to the principle of local self-government and a number of improvements were introduced in this regard. 
Today, the local bodies, urban as well as rural, have a vital role in the process of development. Before we go further into the functions of local bodies, it is worth mentioning that the urban areas are administered by different types of local bodies, like corporations, municipalities, boards, town area committees, and notified area communities, etc. Besides many other characteristics like density, population, occupations, amenities, etc., the 1961 census, while defining a census township, included places of tourist importance which have been recently served with all civic amenities. Here, one must remember that local government is a state subject as per the Constitution of India. Hence, these bodies are created through legislation by the state governments. The functions and responsibilities are all defined in the legislation and that may vary from state to state. Functions, as a matter of fact, to be performed by the municipal committees and the municipal corporations are similar in nature. The real difference lies in their powers, their resources, their jurisdiction and the area of operation increases when the municipalities are raised to the status of municipal corporations. Hence, we can say that municipal corporations are a bigger entity as compared to the municipalities. The functions of local bodies can be divided as under Number 1. The obligatory functions and Number 2. The discretionary functions The obligatory functions comprise of the supply of wholesome water, construction and maintenance of waterworks, construction, maintenance, naming and numbering of public streets, road transport services, lighting and cleaning of public streets and other public places, removal and disposal of filth and rubbish, construction, maintenance and cleaning of drains, public latrines, toilets, etc. Removal of obstructions and projections in or upon public streets and other common places, securing or removal of dangerous buildings or places, Establishment and maintenance of hospitals, maternity and child welfare centers, preventive measures and checking of dangerous diseases, vaccination, inoculation, etc. Registration of births and deaths, regulation of places for the disposal of the dead and provision of places for this purpose, provision of primary education for the masses, maintenance of fire brigades, control and regulation of eating places and publication of corporations reports. These are the obligatory functions of municipal corporations or municipalities. The discretionary functions include construction and maintenance of public parks and gardens, public housing, plantation and care of trees and flowering bushes on roadsides and elsewhere, destruction or detention of stray dogs and other animal causing nuisance, survey of buildings and lands, reception of VIPs, celebration of national days, registration of marriages, births and deaths, organization and maintenance of fairs and exhibitions, relief of destitute and disabled persons, etc. The obligatory functions as enumerated above can be epitomized into four main types. Number one, public health. Number two, public safety and convenience. Number three, medical and public works. Number four, sanitation and conservancy. These functions have to be necessary performed and for which budgetary provisions have to be made. Failure to perform them can empower the state government to supersede the body. State-local bodies relationship Now we are at a position where we are discussing, we are going to discuss state and local bodies relationship. Urban local bodies are institutions for administrative decentralization created by the state government through the municipal acts. The relationship between the two are governed by the provisions of this act. There are four reasons as to why state should exercise control over local bodies which are theoretically considered autonomous. Number one, local bodies are created by the state government. Number two, as part of the state there is need for homogeneous development of all the areas 
which can be ensured by the state. Number three, technical skills and experience required in nation building activities are not available through the local bodies and they have to be provided by the state. State governments provide financial assistance to local bodies which implies control by them to ensure that the money is properly utilized. Whatever be the rationale, the major objective of control and supervision by the state government is to ensure efficiency in the performance of functions by the units of the local government. But what is important is that guidance and control should not be negative. It should not restrict the initiative, discretion and assumption of responsibility by the local bodies. On the other hand, this should strengthen their confidence and enable them to assume more responsibilities. Therefore, there is a need for a high degree of cooperation and coordination between them rather than acrimony. Several criticisms are also offered in regards to the state control. There is a feeling that the stranglehold of the state governments over the local body is too extensive which cuts at the roots of the principle of local autonomy. Two arguments are advanced in this connection. These two arguments are number one. The resource base of the local bodies is shrinking and state governments have been doing little in this regard. Number two, the powers of suppression and dissolution are being indiscriminately used against local bodies. For example, in 1989, out of 73 municipal corporations in the country, 39 were superseded at different points of time. Some of them were superseded almost two decades ago. This is indicative of the extent of control exercised in the states over the local bodies. Many committees have recommended measures to strengthen the resource base and also the capacity of these institutions. Acceptance and implementation of these recommendations would go a long way in ensuring cooperative relations between the state government and the local bodies. Now we will discuss about the local bodies and tourism. Initially, the role of local bodies in tourism development was not accounted for by the planners and the developers. The policy formulation was done at national or state level and the local bodies were ignored in this regard. The tendency has been to thrust projects from above leading to complaints later on that the local body is not cooperative or create hurdles. Most of the local bodies also are not aware regarding their functions and responsibilities in this regard. Of late, they are becoming conscious regarding their role and rights. Their relevance in destination development and sustenance is being recognized at top levels as well. In fact, there is a direct correlation between tourism and local bodies. It is acknowledged that tourist resorts, motels and other places of historical significance and natural beauty are possibly able to attract large number of tourists if the environment around the site is hygienic, well developed, neat and clean and properly maintained. For this, the onus is on the local bodies. In the following sections, we will discuss the areas that have to be managed properly by the local bodies for tourism development. However, it must be noted that these areas are to be looked upon not just because of tourism. They are in way a part of the normal functions of the local bodies and they are equally important to be kept neat and clean for the local population as it is to be looked upon for keeping it neat and clean from tourism perspective. Number 1. The roads, the traffic signals and the direction indicators. The inner roads, pavements etc. within a city or a town are developed and maintained by the concerned local body. By and large, it is found that the conditions of such roads is not up to the mark. Besides, one often finds blockades and encroachments in the form of unauthorized settlements. Animals sitting in the midst of roads is a common scenario in every city. All these interrupt the smooth flow of traffic and cause jams and congestions. Lack of display of traffic signs is another aspect which needs attention along with directions and indicators. 
these are either absent or if put up they are not repainted for years making them unclear or unreadable also there is hardly any inspection done as to check that someone has not tampered with them imagine a situation when a tourist has to go to place a but he reaches place b following the directions given for place a as they had been tampered with providing street lights at proper points is another area to be looked upon then comes sanitation and toilets tourists visit a destination for pleasure and enjoying a healthy environment if the standard of civic amenities is poor garbage disposal or waste collection is not proper pathways are dirty etc the destination earns a bad image at the same time such problems arise because of tourist influx also many tourists are not sensitized to keeping the environment clean they add to the garbage problem of the local bodies dustbins are a rare sight hence it is vital that proper steps are initiated in this regard lack of toilet or dirty toilets is a major problem at the tourist destinations the tourism industry has been raising this issue for a long time now without much improvement it is high time that the local bodies take this issue seriously but with the onset of the swachh bharat abhiyan for the last 5 years the things have improved drastically wherein local bodies local people industry stakeholders they have all pitched in to keep the destinations neat clean and tidy and hygienic third is water supply adequate supply of water is a serious problem and the overcrowding at destinations has added to the miseries of the locals i would like to highlight over here last year a very prominent tourism destination in india called shimla ran out of water and the local population blamed the tourists and the hotels for this at places which has generated tensions also between the locals and the tourists because of water supply being directed to cater the tourist needs and regulated supply to the locals many private resorts have made their own arrangements but the problem remains acute in fact among the tourists it is mainly the low budget tourist who suffers in this regard though potable and bottled mineral water is available at most of the destinations water is required for other purposes as well recreation parks and parking is the fourth point proper maintenance of parks benches at proper spots shelters from sun and rain plantations and adequate parking space along with the recreational facilities adds to the attraction of a destination providing these facilities comes very much under the purview of the local bodies and it is one of the foremost duties of local bodies to create plantations give adequate parking spaces recreation facilities which add to the attraction of the destination and are welcomed by the tourists coming into that place that gives them a good experience of the particular destination which goes a long way in the publicity and furthering of the tourists coming to that particular place point number 5 is pollution it is the prime tasks of the local bodies to keep their area free from pollution of various types we witness that in various cities which are also prominent tourist destinations we suffer a lot of air pollution lot of visual pollution lot of soil pollution and pollution of various other types water pollution as well which leads to a bad experience for the tourists and it is also harmful not only for the tourists but also for the local population Number 6 health hazards and medical aid the broad objectives of health programs in india are to not only check and control but also take steps for doing away with the communicable disease besides local bodies are to provide curative and preventive health services in their areas number of mosquitoes and flies dirty water accumulated in drains and pots and hygienic ways of preparation of eatables unhealthy arrangements for marketing and services of eatable etc pose a very serious threat and also pose a very serious health problem tourists often feel at almost every place of importance that such features are prevalent local bodies concerned must see to it that proper and hygienic conditions are maintained similarly centers to provide medical aid should also be open point number 7 in this case comes the shopping centers neat clean well maintained shops etc attract the attention of the tourists a well set market 
rather adds to significance of the tourist site. It also adds a value addition to the spot because tourists cannot all the time see the monuments or the heritage of the culture. They need some time to go to the shopping centers, the local shopping centers to have a feel of the local population, have a feel of the local market, buy souvenirs, etc. It is obligatory on part of the local bodies to see to it that shops are in their proper areas, meaning thereby that no encroachments are made whereby traffic is affected. Shops must display rates of the items to be sold so that people are not fleeced and required items are available. Unfortunately, the situation seems to be reversed at most of the places. A visit to any tourist place will make you feel that shopkeepers have their own rates. They try to cheat the tourists with the rates, quality of products, etc. The tourists have no option but to buy at their whims and fancies. But in the long run, this brings a bad name to the destination. The bad name to the destination will lead to people not coming to the destination or giving a tag of a cheat destination to the tourists, which in turn will reduce the number of people, the number of tourists coming to that destination. Then comes the point of local transport. Providing local transport in the cities and towns are also from the cities and towns to the places of tourist interest is the responsibility of the local bodies concerned. Such a transport facility will save the tourists from considerable botheration. What is seen is that local transport service at sizable places is not up to the mark. There are no fixed timings and the condition of the vehicles are also bad. Local bodies must endeavor to improve upon the local transport services, have a greater control over the private local transport services and ensure that there is no overcharging. The last point in this regard is the security, law and order. Though maintenance of law and order is a state function, yet the local bodies can extend their fullest cooperation to the district police for maintaining proper law and order. Non-maintenance of proper law and order is a great impediment for tourism. As we all know, if there is a law and order situation at a particular place, tourists will refrain from going to that particular place whether it is international tourists or it is domestic tourists. We have seen many instances in India where there is a law and order cropped up in a particular city and that led to massive cancellations of the tours. Any place which is insecure and has problems of law and order would never be able to emerge as an attractive tourist destination. In the past we have seen cases like in the states of Jammu and Kashmir and Northeast where there were problems of insurgency and law and order and hence these places did not develop much as tourism perspective. So we need to have proper law and order for a destination to be attractive enough to be visited by either domestic tourists or by the international tourists. For the promotion of tourism, it is essential that the place is secure safe and free from disturbances and disorders. At the same time, local body should take steps to check out crime which generates with tourist activities. Tourism or mass tourism will also invite various illegal activities coming up with that place because tourists are also becoming a soft target for many of the criminals for various criminal activities. Now to sum up, we have discussed in this unit about the local bodies, how the local bodies have evolved over a period of time since the Vedic ages, how local bodies and state governments have a relation with each other wherein the state government tries to have a stronghold over the local bodies. We have also discussed about the local bodies and its relationship with tourism and of course what are the various measures for improvement. To sum up the various measures for improvement, we have listed the various measures which can bring in a particular tourist destination into an attractive destination if local bodies also play an important role. Here is the list of the measures for improvement. Number one, strong financial position of the local bodies. Local bodies should have enough of money. They should be strong in financial aspects so that they can spend money on the various needs and requirements of the particular place to be made into an attractive tourist destination. Share of earnings of a tourist resort should be passed on to the local bodies also. It is not just the resort or the hotel that will attract, but it is also the cleanliness and the neatness of the surrounding areas 
and the city as a whole that will attract tourists. Hence, some share of earnings of the tourist resort should be passed on to the local bodies. Sound leadership of local bodies for having long-term perspective. The leadership should be mature enough. They should be visionaries enough so that they can make a long-term impact on the destination. Number four, active involvement of local bodies in resort development and tourist awareness programs. Like we have Swachhata Action Plan of the Ministry of Tourism, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan of the Government of India, wherein local bodies are roped in to create awareness among the tourists, among the stakeholders, and among the local school children, so that the place is kept neat, clean, and hygienic. Then comes friendly relationship among local elected representative and the officials. We often see that there is disharmony between the officials and the local elected representatives. Officials feel that they are there for long term and the elected representatives of the local bodies are only for a short period of time. So they do not pay much heed to the local representatives. Local representatives think that they are the local government, so officials should obey to the orders and this leads to disharmony and lack of cordial relationship. But to develop a particular place, friendly relationship among local elected representatives and officials is a must. Then comes the coordination. The coordination between the district administration and local bodies has to be very high. Then only the city, the people, the place will be able to flourish and become a neat, clean, hygienic, safe place for the tourists. Then comes the cooperation of the citizens. Everything cannot be done by a local body or the government or the district administration. It is we, the citizens of a place, who have a greater role in keeping the city up to the mark. Hence, the cooperation of the citizens becomes very, very important for a destination to survive and thrive. Good relations between local bodies and tourist resort management is required because tourist resort management companies cannot work or survive in isolation. They have to have the help of local bodies, so there should be a good relationship developed between the local bodies and the tourists resort management companies. Then, of course, give due importance to environment preservation. If there is no environment left, sustainability aspect has to be taken care of. No environment means no life for that particular city. So we cannot develop anything without taking into consideration the local environment and its benefit. But the most crucial aspect for any destination is to decide its carrying capacity and this should be done by the local body. This will not only increase the life of the destination but also ease the pressure on local resources and residents. Here we are talking about the physical carrying capacity because that is very very important. All the amenities, all the things provided by the local bodies have a limit to which they can sustain. With the increase of number of people, with the increase of number of tourists coming to a destination, the resources also need to be increased at the same level. If the case is not so, beyond the carrying capacity, the destination will kill itself. So this was all for today. Thank you so much. Keep learning.